and get started. I don't like standing on the stage because I feel like I'm giving a concert and I'm not very good at it. So uh, uh, this uh, second day, you guys enjoying Barcelona, enjoying OpenStack? So I am between you guys and all the happy hours and, and the drinks, right? So I know uh, it's been a long day, so we'll try to make this interesting. Uh, uh, just, uh, just a few rules. I think uh, a lot of people that come to this conference are very, very smart. A lot of you guys are a lot smarter than I am. So I'm going to usually these slides are guidelines, and we just run through some of these things. What is very interesting for us is question, answers, uh, comments, suggestions, because it is a great opportunity for us to get a pulse as to what we are doing and, and where, where, where the world is going. So feel free to stop me at any time. Raise your hand. Um, I can repeat the question. If you think uh, we are on the right path, let us know. If you think we are definitely going the wrong way, then, then please speak up, because it's all about the community here. right? So with that, a uh, uh, little bit of introductions. My name is Adnan. I am responsible for the STN uh, strategy and the product management at Dell EMC. Uh, exciting times, as, as you might have heard uh, the news. We just uh, closed a, a small merger, so so became <laughs> uh, twice the size. Uh, so. Um, Essentially, what my team does and what my responsibility is to make sure that we go and do networking in a different way and actually make sure networking does not stand in the way of innovation. And I, I don't know how many of you believe, but, but networking has been boring for the last decade, at least that's what I believe, uh, and, and, and the interesting times are ahead. So we'll talk about uh, some of the things that, uh, that we are doing and, and, and how it ties to OpenStack. I think it's fairly straightforward. So what we are doing is not very complicated. And, and hopefully it should make intuitive sense. So, so with that, let's just get into this. And I do tend to skip the marketing slides, although I have to run everything through marketing before I present, so, so, but I really don't want to bore you guys with, with some of the marketing content. Uh, this being one of it. So uh, I think we all understand why we want to go take a look at technologies like OpenStack. And, and if I, I have a better slide about this, and I'll actually use this. So what we... What we have seen uh, is that doing OpenStack at an enterprise level is, is, is hard. I mean, what, at Dell EMC, what we are trying to do is to make it easy for people to actually deploy OpenStack solutions. And, and the reason for doing that is the following. It is because of what has happened on the public cloud side of the world, people on the enterprise side have to approach infrastructure in a different way. And, and we just cannot keep building infrastructure and keep doing IT the way we used to do, do it uh, a couple of years ago. And, and the reason is because at the end of the day, the expectations that your business has from you is that you've got to go faster. I mean, the, 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 whole, the whole agility aspect of how to deploy applications to get infrastructure up and running, to reuse infrastructure for different applications and make it application agnostic, that's, that's all a reality and that's an expectation from a hybrid cloud or a private cloud deployment that you guys might be doing or, or might be looking at. So one of the reasons why, one of the business reasons that we look at is, okay, how can we help you go faster, right? The second thing is, instead of doing IT in a silo where you have, you know, compute team, server team, uh, networking team, storage team, we, we see teams actually coming closer together and, and working to de deliver the business objectives. So, so the idea is how do you basically build technology that actually enables these teams that have had, that understand technology, that understand in the infrastructure, but get more closely working together with each other. So if you, if you take a look at it, the idea here is for people to actually spend time on doing productive things rather than you know, sitting on CLI and writing configurations. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line here. And I think everybody here understands that security is, is the number one issue that a lot of us, uh, depending on which space you're in, are facing. So the bottom, at the end of the day, what you've got to do is you've got to go faster and you've got to be economical because you are get, we are getting a lot of pressure from the public cloud side of things. Now, from a cap, my belief, and this is my opinion, uh, I have to state it's not Dell's official opinion, but, but my opinion. I think at the end of the day, on the CapEx side of the world, you can never you know, be as efficient as the big cloud guys just because of the volume of purchase they have, right? But CapEx is one side of cost. If you start building your infrastructure the way these guys are building it, and on the same design principles, on the operational sides, you can be as efficient. 
And that is why we are here, and that is why you have technologies like OpenStack, because instead of building an orchestration platform by yourself, because I doubt many of you have a 500 people software engineering team, you, you have to rely on technologies like that so that can automate and deploy and manage your infrastructure, right? So, so that's with that premise, let's, let's get into what we are doing. So now the, for, the session is focused on what Dell EMC is doing from a networking perspective, right? So I, I find this a very interesting slide, and I usually make it interactive because it's, it's almost 4 o'clock on a, on, a, uh, on a Wednesday in Barcelona, and I don't know what time you guys were out till, but I was out till 4 in the morning. Actually, this is getting recorded. No, I was sleeping. Uh, so let's, let's have some, some fun with this. So, um, and, and the reason why we do it is not to quiz anybody, but, but to actually talk about you know, what, what happened. I mean. Whatever this is showing on the slide, this phenomena happened on the compute side of the world, right? So how many people here remember mainframes or sun, you know, or, or architectures like sun? So what happened? So today you're deploying x86, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, what happened with, how did that, how did the x86 phenomena happen? Okay, cheaper and faster is one thing, but that, that's, Part of the answer I'm looking for, again, it's just to wake everybody up, honestly. It's not, not a quiz. I mean, you don't get a prize or anything like that. Although there is a raffle, so, so you, you, on the, before I end, I'm actually going to announce the winner of the raffle. So, so that's the only thing. It's, but it's just to make it interactive and fun. It's not to quiz anybody. Cheaper and faster is one thing. But if I make something today that is zero cost to you, it's still, you're not going to deploy it, right? So let's go beyond cheaper and faster. Let's go what technology phenomena it enabled. So who wants to take a stab at it? I can grab you a free coffee downstairs after we're done. So again, it's just to have fun. Come on, what did x86 do? Why did x86 happen? Sorry? It commoditized the hardware. Let's go above the stack a little bit, right? Agreed that it is cheaper. Faster is questionable. Uh, commoditization, absolutely agreed. What runs on a server? An operating system? Okay. It was, if you, if you think about what happened again, just to accelerate because it's Europe and it's, people are a little shy here, so, so it's, it's easier in America. It's harder in Asia, in Japan, by the way, if you, if you do this. Uh, the application ecosystem, you see your, your, your operating system was not tied to your hardware anymore, right? And your applications were developed on the operating system. And that, the ecosystem thrived. And today, because of applications, right? I mean, if, if, if I give you a piece of hardware for free and your application doesn't work on it, you're not gonna deploy it. So it is the application ecosystem that basically drove the commoditization and, and all the other answers we got on the compute side of the world, right? If, if you go back, 15 years even before the compute revolution, the same thing happened with, with, with desktops and notebooks, by the way. It's, it's interesting, whenever you have a vertically integrated phenomena, eventually the model breaks apart and, 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 and the industry follows the same phenomena. So the question that we started asking ourselves at Dell at the time, or Dell EMC now, is why is networking so different? And if you think about it, networking has been locked for a very, very long time. I mean, the speeds have gotten faster. I mean, I would, one could argue that per gig pro, pro, uh, price in the port went down as well. But you get this pretty box from one of the big vendors downstairs. It has nice lights and ports in the back and CLI and API access, but you cannot touch the OS on the box. And, and that is the epiphany that came to us about two years ago. And that is what we decided to go change. Now, if you, go, if you look at this slide, the first movement happened, and I, I, I mean, I think ev almost every major vendor has followed that movement, which is merchant silicon, right? So, so that's done. The second thing is, now, most of the hardware is, is being designed, and there are movements in OCP and other places where, where that is happening as well. But more or less hardware, I would say, networking standpoint, it's fairly, it's getting standardized, although there isn't a standard that exists. But the software is where I believe that Dell actually drove the differentiation compared to any other, other major OEM vendor in the world. And I'm extremely proud to be part of Dell throughout this movement. And what we did was we basically went after the, initially the any networking OS option. And that's what we solved for. So what did we do? This is 
this is our opinion about the networking industry, and this is where we are today. Believe me, it was a two-year journey, and it's a not an easy transition to make when you actually have your own operating system that you develop on. So let's, 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 let's work through this slide. On the rightmost side, we basically have some of the choices of the operating systems that we offer on our, all of our data center portfolio. So today, you can actually go and, 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 and uh, uh, call Dell or, or whatever your purchase mechanism is. You can buy a Dell switch, and you can choose either Cumulus, you can switch, uh, choose Big Switch, you can choose IP Infusion or Pluribus. These are the four operating system choices that are non-Dell-owned intellectual property that we offer on all our data center portfolio. Now, I mean, just to, I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm, you guys can go read up on the operating system choices, and I mean, I only have like 40 minutes here, so I don't want to get into why each one of those, but we picked each one of these because they solve a different use case. And, and the challenge here is that we believe that IT organizations don't go home on a Friday night saying that Monday morning we'll, we'll be SDN ready, right? It, it's a transition. It's a skill set transition, right? It doesn't happen overnight. But as you grow through that journey, we want to give you the choices which is right for your use case and right for where your organization is today. Let me ask you a different question. If you actually, how many people here actually have Dell Compute deployed in their infrastructure? Service? Okay. My three most favorite people in the room. Uh, but if you want to change your OS on, the, on your server, do you have to ship the server back? No? Right? Similarly, on networking, if Dell, what we have done is you can actually start with any operating system that you like and change it and you don't have to rip and replace your hardware. So essentially, we are giving you the protection of having infrastructure in place as you go down the software-defined journey. And the first word in SDN is S. So let's go figure that out rather than trying to shove a vertically integrated model everybody's throat, down everybody's throat. So again, a lot of time spent on this because I do believe that this is the, the fundamental mindset difference that exists between what the way we are looking at the industry and the way everybody else is looking at the industry. And I would challenge you that as people that actually flew all the way to Barcelona, because you believe in open architectures, you're at OpenStack, you want this to be successful, no matter what your vendor of choice might be, push those guys to move in this direction. Otherwise, you're saying one thing and you're doing another. <laughs> And, and, and that's, that's the fundamental thing I challenge my customers, my partners, and my peers. And I'm a technology guy, so I make technology statements, and I apologize for being very firm about it. But unless you guys, if you guys believe in the open movement, you have to push the industry in that direction. And we listen, and that's what we are doing. And it's a very big mindset change. So on one side, you have these options. So now let's talk about the middle, uh, the leftmost. Uh, at Dell EMC, we have developed a new operating system called OS10. Uh, don't ask me how we came up with that name. It just, it's got nothing to do with iOS 10. Uh, uh, and uh, it's a full, uh, it's a, it's a Linux-based operating system, which is, which is not something that hasn't been solved, but a few differentiations in it. Number one, it's an unmodified Linux kernel. So we'll support multiple Linux distributions in it, so that's, that's, that's one thing. The second thing is we have built a messaging infrastructure in it, so, and, and that is gonna make sense in a minute. And what we have done is, how many people are familiar with OCP here? Okay, so are you familiar with the Sonic project that got announced at the OCP Summit in February? Okay, so Sonic is a project that was announced by Microsoft, which is the first, it's an open source uh, switch OS project that got launched under the OCP umbrella. And we have contributed our operating system base into, into the open source community. And, and, and we are the first major OEM vendors to actually embrace open source in, in that part of the, uh, 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 the, the community. And now what we are doing, so that we did together with Microsoft made its contributions, we made our contributions, and today you can go to GitHub and you can download it and you can run it yourself, install Quagga, BGP on top, and, and off you go to the races. And that is the exact software that if you actually want to get support from Dell and you want to get the full Dell stack, you, can, you still have the option to do so. So what we are doing here is that for customers or partners that 
have the ability to deploy and run their infrastructures themselves and want to code, code it up, the, the geek town or the geek squad is the way I call it, you have the choice to go through GitHub. If you want support and you say, you know what, I, I, I do want somebody to call, you can pick up the, you can buy support from Dell and you can go do that. Again, on one side, we are perfectly fine that if you go down the open source road and we're perfectly fine if you want to give us a little bit of money and we'll, we'll take it. But the whole movement is that if you take a look at it, the hardware is getting standardized, okay? You have software choices available. And on the leftmost spectrum, or we call it the, the most, the most DevOps-centric spectrum, we are giving you the ability to run open source on our switch. And the other reason is because we believe that a lot of innovation as we move forward in the networking world is going to come from applications. And in order for you to, to, to enable networking application ecosystem on the switch, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to open source the software. Because otherwise, everything is tied to the Dell infrastructure. So from our perspective, we are the first major OEM. And I think after EMC acquisition and now that we are Dell EMC, we are a fairly serious infrastructure player. We are the first major player to have this kind of an approach and such an open mindset for the data center part of the industry. And that is how we are very different than, than anybody else. So I wanted to sort of highlight this, because what we are doing is we are basically giving you the building blocks to enable some of these things. So makes sense? And again, I think the, the picture in the bottom is fairly self-evident. I mean, most of us know what a class architecture is and, and, and how to run L3 fabrics. So, so I, and I hope that a lot of you are moving to L3 and not building long, I mean, that's a different debate, uh, big L2 stretch domain. So, uh, does it, does it make sense? I mean, have I, have I done a decent job at explaining how we are looking at the industry from a software standpoint? Okay. How many people here think that this is interesting? Just give me, give me a gut check because I need to know if we are on the right path or not. I know it's five. Okay. How many people here would actually bother Googling the GitHub and download the code? Okay. Well, you work for Dell, so. <laughs> okay. So, so. Again, guys, I, that's one of the things I wanted to drive home. I mean, again, so hopefully this is, this is interesting. And you'll see a lot of innovation come from our side. I mean, we are, we are looking at things like bringing, bringing an L3 application as a container on top of the stack. Right? Again, these are innovations we are working through. But first, you've got to go enable the platform and the base stuff. Again, think compute. Right? When you were driving the commoditization and the faster and the cheaper in compute, you had to basically go enable the basic building blocks. Right? And then that's what we are working towards. So, how does this all tie into OpenStack? Well, first of all, the first word in OpenStack is open. So, so with that, what we have done is for, remember the comment I made that your investments in, in, uh, in, in Dell are, are, are actually protected, right? So uh, you, can, you can go with Dell infrastructure today and you can move down the operating systems at any point, right? But in order for you to run your applications today, your mission critical applications, what do you need to do to work with Dell, right? That's the question because I don't think anybody is going to run their most critical open applications on open source software on, on day one, right? So it's a journey that you will take. It will happen. It is just a matter of time. I mean, you and I can debate on the time frame. For, and I think it depends on your business needs, it depends on your organizational needs, and it depends on the, how much time you have to, to, to operationalize this. But I, I do believe that maybe two to three years at the same conference, hopefully at the same location, you know, if, if I ask how many people are running open source in their infrastructure, a lot more hands would go up, right? So we basically support, let's say we took two examples. So we have reference architectures with Red Hat and Mirantis, which have the whole... One of, the, one of the things that we are trying to do is to make it easy for you to run OpenStack end-to-end. -end. So please don't look at Dell EMC as a networking or, or, I mean, as a networking solution or a compute solution. We basically develop these solutions in our enterprise labs. We test them, we certify them, we give you a reference architecture while giving you the ability to choose components at every level as you see fit, and you can change them. So that's... If you, we have two, 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 two engineered solutions that we have basically re uh, reference art. You can reach out to us. We can happy to give you the details. We have the certification, the testing, and all those things done. One is on Red Hat. One is on Mirantis. I am not going to go into the hardware spec detail because I, you know, it's not about giving you the model numbers. But on the software side, from a networking perspective, you you have two choices. You can, you have more than two choices. But you can start with Cumulus, or you can start with Big Switch as the underlay. 
And depending on what overlay you want to pick, you can pick New Arch or you can pick Medicura as, as an overlay option. And it, the, the reason is it basically takes away the pain that you have when you run OpenStack by yourself from a networking perspective. And again, the, both these OSs are interchangeable. So, so that's, and they plug into Neutron because that's what you got to get into. So we basically, uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the reason for doing reference architectures, and again, I'm just going to touch on this slide, or engineered solution from our perspective is because if you want to, if you like everything we are doing, you can actually go get a turnkey solution and it will work tomorrow morning. We have a professional services offering around it. We have people that know how to come and get it up and running in your site and, and get your applications going. So all of the building blocks that we are building, they eventually go into this engineered solution and we give people the ability to basically get the whole solution from Dell, which is certified, and then you can choose what you want to do with it. So we have, as I mentioned, it's one with Red Hat, it's one, one with uh, Verantis. So let me, I want to leave some time for questions, so let me get to the, to the, to the, to the, to the operating system or the software defined part, because this is the networking side. On the, how many people here have heard the name Cumulus? Okay, so for the people that haven't, if you are a Linux savvy shop, this is a good choice for you. It essentially gives you the ability to manage your infrastructure from a networking perspective the same way you manage, sorry, you have a question? Uh, the manage your compute infrastructure, okay? It actually gives you a batch prom, it's a, and off you go to the races. So that is one of the operating system choices that we present. We, again, have created the reference architecture for our OpenStack solution using Cumulus as well. And it just gives you the ability to automate a lot more, but you have to have Linux expertise. And, and, and if, you, if you are looking at this as a networking operating system choice uh, on, on one of our platforms. Uh, the, the way to deploy this, at the end of the day, it's pretty straightforward. You basically do an L3 class fabric. How many people here are networking engineers? Just for fun, okay. So, okay, for the rest of you guys, this is fairly standard. It's not rocket science. And this is the architecture that is running some of the largest infrastructures on planet Earth because it gives you a lot of things for free. And it has a very high resiliency. If you, the, the interesting thing about this architecture is if you think old school, okay, let's for fun. Any box can fail at any point and you lose very little of traffic in the infrastructure because the resiliency is not built in expensive boxes, it is built in the architecture. So it's a distributed architecture and any, 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 and you basically are doing routing from, from the host app. So that is the standard architecture that we support. It actually gives you the ability to, to, to uh, run and automate your infrastructure, like I said, the same way you manage your compute nodes if you're a Linux shop, and it's easy. The second solution that we recommend, again, this has been tested, and, and we, we have white papers and the complete reference architecture is with Big Switch. How many people here are familiar with Big Switch? Okay, two. So on one side, we have an option which gives you the ability to run Linux, right? Because you're Linux savvy. For people that don't have the operational teams that have the capability to do that, what do you do? So we have to give you a solution for that. And the way you do that is, Okay, how many people flew into Barcelona? Just raise your hand. Okay, would you want to fly into Barcelona if the air traffic control wasn't working? No. Okay. Just because the traffic in the data center has grown to the point that now, instead of two people making their own decisions, you have a controller that is sitting and looking at all the infrastructure and makes all the decisions because it has the global view. So it actually takes all the intelligence and it runs on a redundant way on a server and switches become just basically port forwarders. And every time you need to make a change, you just go make a change on the controller, you don't have to touch the switches. So on the op look, from an operational standpoint, it's a very efficient way to run your infrastructure compared to you know, going on CLI and changing everything. And it has APIs that ties into Neutron and you're, you're very good. So, and the other thing it does is, is it cheaper to actually develop control plane logic on custom hardware or is it cheaper to run it on a server? cheaper to run it on a server. So 
very different way is actually a big switch. So those are the two, two things, again, because there aren't a lot of networking people, so I, I want to point out that the reason for doing, do, one of the things that this solution offers that nobody offers in the industry, it actually takes most of the complexity and the challenges that traditionally come with OpenStack networking, and, and, and because it has, it has agent that runs on a server and it replaces the routing functionality there, so, so you should be good. But again, not, because we only have two networking people here, we can have offline conversation on how that's done. I don't want to get too geeky about it. So, and how many people heard about the corona deployment that Verizon talked about at OpenStack in Austin? So this is what they're using. And it's fairly public, so I'm not giving any secrets. And so I think we are running out of time, so I wanted to stop for a second. And I mean, that's the last fun slide I have. After this, it's, it's, it's again, marketing stuff. So did I, did, did, did I at least give you guys an overview as to how Dell EMC is looking at software-defined networking? Is it complicated? Uh, it's OK. Any opinion is, is, is a good opinion. Simple enough? How many here think that we are absolutely, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, can, let me just come closer. The question is, can you run it on a server to test it? Yeah, so we basically have some, some VMs. I mean, some of these uh, orchestration, to, they're available in a VM. You can run on a server to play with it. But the challenge in networking is for you to truly test anything. You actually have to run it in your network. So uh, uh, we can we give, I mean we, we can definitely figure it out. But but yes, I mean you can go to uh, if you saw drop me an email. You can go to the website and download a VM that you can run on your on your on your laptop actually and, and play around with the CLI. But it's not going to route, right? So or switch. Yeah, absolutely. You you can definitely go do that. So I know we have. Uh, how are we doing on time? Three, four, okay. Yeah. So we should. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left. Any other questions before I announce the raffle winner, or is the person not in yet? Just. A, I have a question um, for everyone in the room, especially we've got a few guys in here. Uh, what is everyone doing with regard to Neutron inside of OpenStack? Uh, it, like, a show of hands, who is running just stock ML2? Or do you, is it stock ML2, or are you using a third? Already provided plugin. Pardon? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So, same. Basically, the, you, you are. Do you like? Is it okay to ask? Like, what kind of third party? What third party plugin you're using? Oh. And okay. Yeah, so essentially you're, you're solving that problem through NSX. So, which, by the way, is perfectly fine, given that we're all Dell Technologies now. So, uh, OK, so before I do the raffle, uh, pretty simple. The only thing I want to, you, you guys to take away from this session is the way Dell EMC is looking at networking is essentially we're the only vendor that is truly opening the whole networking space up. And we're, and, and, if you, if you want to take a look at Dell, you don't have to worry about the fact that we basically test and certify all these solutions. And you can buy a complete end-to-end -end one rack to, to 50 racks to 100 to thousands of racks, which actually have been tested and certified through our engineered systems. And you can change at any point of delineation within your infrastructure. You can, you can pick, pick Red Hat or Mirantis. You can pick uh, any of the op operating systems on the switches and you can basically get a complete engineered solution. So with that, hopefully this was fun. Let me just pick the raffle thing, because I think the thing is pretty cool. Uh, two, two, three. Who has two, two, three? It is two, two, three. OK, going once. Going twice. I'll pick another one, then. One, nine, nine. Oh, congratulations, actually. This is pretty cool. There you go. Thank you, Mika. <laughs> it is actually a Bluetooth speaker, right? 
So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, something that you would actually use when you go out later tonight. So, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of OpenStack. Uh, uh, get home safe, or how if Barcelona is home, you live in a great city. So, thanks. Take care.